Hey, Team Happy and Fit. I am so excited. I love Tuesdays. And the reason I love Tuesdays is because I get to connect with you. Something that I've been sharing a lot with um, the coaches that I mentor, um, specifically whether it's one-on-one -on -one or some of my PS coaches, is don't forget to have fun. Have fun while coaching. Have fun while sharing your journey. Have fun while connecting with the team. Like This should be so much fun. Yes, it requires work. Yes, it requires you to be consistent, but at the same time, I think going for hard goals and pushing yourself should be fun as well. And I think we can get so tied down to insignificant things in this business. I think we can get so tied down to things that literally can frustrate us so much. And so don't get tied down by those. You are the one that can control that and just choose to have fun. Um, so someone is asking me, a couple, or it was Rachel actually, it was a couple of days ago when I was with Laura and Rachel said, Julianne, did you play basketball or play a sport? And I said, I did. And I was a defender. Like if I was on the basketball court, I would look and see where that ball was and it was mine. Um, I was good at offense, but I preferred defense when it came to basketball. And I remember I was in fourth grade. I made the traveling team with never having any experience before. I just have a really strong work ethic, right? So I was surrounded by, even though it was fourth grade, girls that had been playing basketball for a really, really long time with the same people. And I made the travel team being a new kid. And I met some of my really close friends during that time. I played my first organized basketball game. And all of a sudden, the ref said I was out, and I sat down and started crying on the bench. What I hadn't realized is that if you foul uh, a lot of times, you get fouled out. And I didn't understand that. And so it made me think about it actually this weekend when Rachel brought that up, is that you don't need permission to figure this out. For me, I didn't need someone to tell me that, hey, if you have this many fouls, you foul out, foul out. I learned by experience. I learned by getting in the game. I learned by showing up and trying hard. And then what did I do after I fouled out? I still fouled out a lot more games after that because I was, I, like I said, I was a huge defender. But the thing was, is I, I, I got it. I understood. For, for some reason, I didn't understand what was happening. But from that moment, I understood that I have this many fouls, and if I have this many fouls, like I need to, to watch myself, right, with each quarter. And with coaching, I think so many times, people wait for permission. People wait for their coaches to help them with something. I am telling you what, when you get in the game and you just go for it, you're gonna learn and you're gonna course correct and you're gonna get better with get better over time. Does that make sense? So for me, I with coaching, and I was just talking to Lauren Lundberg about this. I said, Lauren, do you remember when we got started that we just got started? That we just no one told us anything. We just I was newer at the time and we just kind of figured it out. I had never been in a challenge group before. I had never, like, I had never even tried Shakeology before, but I figured it out. Did I have some really lame challenge groups? Yes. They were so brutally bad. They were so bad. Like, it was just like what you would expect to be horrible. No one would do anything. But over time, I got better. So get in the game. Don't wait. Just go do. There are so many resources. It is so amazing. So please get out your paper and pen. Please log out of Facebook. Put your phone away. I'm really excited to deliver to you today on exceptional communication. Um, but before we do that, I think that this is something that's been on my heart as well. I'm really excited to share it and it might be an aha for you. I've been talking to a lot of coaches and this is what I really encourage you to do. Do not just withdraw from the bank make sure you deposit. And I just share this in our meetup for our challenge group today, where I think a lot of times coaches come to the team page to ask a question. I think a lot of coaches expect answers for them, but they're not giving anything back. So then they think this doesn't work. They think this community isn't what it is, what, what I had told them that it is. And the way that you're going to grow and the way that you're going to experience such insane uh, morale, a part of this team is that you aren't in the just withdraw type of mentality that you are depositing. So how do you deposit on a team that you're new to? How do you deposit to a team that you've been on for a while? How do you do that? 
you share motivational quotes, you lift up other people, you welcome new coaches. I just saw a coach um, that was on our team that had one like and zero comments. And I know people must have missed it because it was probably on the weekend. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want them to ever think that we're not a welcoming community. I don't think that that was the intentions. I don't think people were like, I'm not going to welcome that person. But I was just thinking like, ah, like one of my favorite things with joining the team was how many people welcomed me to it. Does that make sense? So as you're coming to the team with questions and as you're expecting things in return, that might bite you in the butt. <laughs> so for me, what I started doing when I started leading, and I hope that this is just like, like a good, like, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that. Like, I can't just wait for the community to impact me. How about I impact the community in my own way? Does that make sense? So for me, when I first started, I didn't know anyone. And honestly, you guys, I hate being the new person. I like, it makes me feel uncomfortable. And so I was like, okay, I can either live in discomfort or I can do something about it. So I chose to do something about it. And what did I do? I just posted every day in there. I welcomed new coaches. I posted motivational songs. I posted um, people that I was recognizing because I didn't have a I didn't have a team yet. I didn't have people with me yet. And so I just would make friendships. I would friend request other coaches and build those relationships. And what I found is that the more that I gave, the more I felt fulfilled as a coach. Does that make sense? Because if you're constantly taking. They're like, it's just, it's just going to feel empty or you're going to get irritated quicker. If that makes sense, like, oh, I'm not getting my questions answered or this isn't happening. Change your approach, change your approach as you approach the team with, with deposit, deposit, deposit. I don't think that you should give while expecting anything in return. I think people will do that. They'll be like, well, I know if I give this much, then I'll get something in return. I don't have that mentality. I just have, you know what? I'm just going to give. And I'm just going to do, and I'm just going to show, and I'm just going to go, not trying to be a rapper right now, but it's working in my favor. I know I'm awesome. And as we go, right, like I'm just going to just give, and I'm just going to figure this thing out. And I'm going to have insane momentum and enthusiasm as I'm understanding how to build a solid culture. And so that's what I really encourage you guys to do is don't just withdraw deposit and deposit with enthusiasm, deposit with gratitude. Um, and I, I, I swear to you, it's going to shift your whole mentality on what you can take onto your personal page, what it'll take onto your stories, what it'll take onto your excitement and conviction about this team, because it's really hard to sell something when you're not sold on it. It's really hard to, to not back something up when you're not fully in it. Does that make sense? But it's kind of like someone who's trying to help someone with Shakeology and they're not on Shakeology. Like that doesn't make sense in my, in my head. It doesn't make sense to me if you want to build a business and you're inactive. Like it doesn't make sense to me. Just being raw, real, this is a business. Like you want to help, right? But if you're expecting people to join you, you have to make sure that you're covering those, that, that, that ground. Another thing that I've been thinking about as we're going into um, exceptional communication is massive enthusiasm that things are not going to always go your way. <laughs> People are probably going to piss you off. But if you can show up with massive enthusiasm, it is going to shift your perspective like no other. And so what I mean by that is this, we just talked about this in our challenge group meetup, which we're doing now every Tuesday. And it's awesome. Um, it's really cool to see challengers jumping on Zoom just like this. It's really cool to take posts and things like that outside of Facebook and, and see everyone face to face. It's been really cool. Um, and today I made a post and some of you saw it and liked it about guilt of how people and their expectations of you and you let them down and you feel guilty about it because they make you feel guilty, right? Or you let yourself down and you have an expectation for yourself and you feel guilty about that. How many of you struggle with guilt? Yeah, I think we all do. We struggle with guilt, right? So if you can show up with massive enthusiasm without apologizing of lowering your expectations for other people is going to be really powerful for you. I feel like over the last four days, ask Eric, I have been guilt tripped like nobody else's business. And I showed up with massive enthusiasm without apologizing for who I am and what I've chosen to do whether that's with this business, whether that's with unplugging this weekend and being with family, 
whether that's saying no to certain opportunities that people thought I shouldn't say no to. I'm not going to apologize for putting my self-care care first. I'm not going to apologize for putting my family first. I'm not going to apologize for being me. Does that make sense? Apologies are definitely ones owed when you are in the wrong and you have hurt someone. However, when someone is projecting their broken expectation, it is now on you on how you're going to receive it. Are you going to dig yourself in a hole, get frustrated, complain? Or are you going to show up with massive enthusiasm and not apologize for your self-care and who you are? And that was a big learning moment and curve for me is I cannot apologize for when I'm taking care of myself. And it also goes to show too, on your own journey, are you beating yourself down because you aren't walking a line of perfectionism? I talked about this on our challenge group call. And I said, this is what happens. You're going really well and really strong for two weeks. Then you get off track and then you beat yourself down. You let yourself down and you feel so guilty that you haven't worked out in three days, two days. Have you guys ever felt that way before? At, right, like, right? Like I felt that way, maybe not in that kind of way, but in some sort of way. And we have this ability to feel so guilty and, and, and make ourselves feel so whatever. Um, someone messaged me today and they're like, oh, you, you stopped 80 day obsession? Um, question mark, because I did Insanity Max 30 today. You know what my soul needed? a workout that is my soulmate workout. My mind shift, my mindset, my body, what I needed today was Insanity Max 30, even though I'm on this 80 day journey. And you know what? Um, I think we can line ourselves up. We have to do it perfect. We have to be on it all the time. I'm not making excuses. All I'm saying is I'm not dwelling. I'm not gonna sit around and be like, man, didn't follow this to a T, I'm a loser. I was just like, no, like my soul needs some Shanti in my life and I need a kick in the butt. I know I feel my best when I do Insanity Max 30, and I felt so alive and felt so good I made that choice for myself. It's kind of a weird example, but if you guys are struggling with guilt, how many people who watch you are struggling with guilt? So before we get into this exceptional communication, what are ways you can invite that aren't the typical inviting? How can you stand out from other people. Teresa Schrader sent me a message the other day and she said, you're brilliant. Because on my Instagram stories, I said this. And she knew exactly, she knew exactly what it was. And I said something like this. Hey ladies, how many of you are not feeling yourself lately? Yes or no, how many of you took the poll on my Instagram stories? Some of you on here did, right? That was my invite, you guys. That was my invite. Hey, how many of you haven't been feeling yourself lately? Then in the next slide, it said this. I said, I don't, I hate it when I don't feel myself because I feel really frustrated, filled with doubt, and, and just, I don't feel good. I would love to find a way to help you. And so that was my invite. And that invite was so different than, hey, I have a group coming up. I'm trying to help people lose weight, tone up, do all the stuff, right? Where I truly believe what I have to offer is going to help people feel better about themselves. Also, I do think I have a solution to help women not feel so guilty all the time. Why? Because this is helping me not feel guilty all the time. I'm learning with self-growth on how to be my best and deal with it. Does that make sense? So as I'm doing that, I, I'm, I'm, I'm showing and sharing people my journey. So how can you show up on an invite that's not your typical invite? Man, ladies, I've been so cured lately of, of feeling sleep deprived and exhausted. I don't know about you guys, but when I have low energy, I just don't feel myself. Or when I don't, like, I, it is so frustrating when I feel like I don't get enough sleep. Anyone else struggle with that? Boom, there. So then when people participated on my poll, I also shift it to, hey, thanks for Thanks for participating on my poll. I really appreciate it. Why do you feel like you're not feeling yourself? Workouts, sleep, energy, nutrition. And that's my, what I say back to them. Does that make sense? And then I go to say, hey, by the way, I have a boot camp coming up. It's totally transformed my entire life. I would love for you to get more information. I really believe that this is going to help you. Do you see how I shifted it to make it geared towards the need that they have? and not the need that I think that they have. Does that make sense? That I geared it towards 100% that they're, they're struggling with this. Hey, tell me more about that. I actually have a solution for you for that. 
But the only way to do that is to truly know where you have struggled, you're currently struggling, and how you can relate to that person. So how can you stick out? Uh, Teresa Schrader said it like this, how can you zig when everyone's zagging? Or how, if like whatever way that is, right? How can you stand out differently that isn't that typical way that starts a conversation and a connection? And then what you want to do as you go through that journey is that instead of going so wide with them, you want to go deep with them, right? So as I've been doing that, I've been showing up with massive enthusiasm. You guys, I am at Success Club 4. That does not happen for me at this point of the month. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. And this entire month has been a growth month. This month has been amazing. Tony Robbins, um, uh, so friends in town, my brother-in-law got married, like a lot of stuff that aren't excuses because I can tell you what, if I want something, I'm going to get it. And if you want something, it is going to require work. It's gonna require focus, but I really think it's gonna require massive enthusiasm. For me, I'm like, game on, let's do this. I'm going to show up so hard, so hard and enthusiastically for the people that I'm ready to help and who need my help. And then as I do that, I don't shift it to, man, I'm only at SC4. This sucks. If you start shifting your energy to the lack, if you start shifting your energy to the suck, if you start shifting, you should have heard my sister-in-law when I said that to her this weekend, she got really mad at me when I said, stop lagging in the suck right now. And she didn't, I didn't see her for the rest of the night. Um, she was really upset with me, but it was true. It's like, stop like sulking in it, like soaking in it. Stop like bringing this doom down because it's honestly not that big of a deal, right? And as you're on your journey as a coach, it's really easy to focus on what's not happening in your favor. It's really easy to focus on the excuses you're making. It's really easy to focus on, well, I should have done this or should have done this. If you show up with massive enthusiasm, guess what vibe the people are going to get from you as you're showing up hard for them? They're going to feel your vibe, right? But man, when you're, when you're focused on the, the lack and the slack and the pressure and just like, this isn't fun and I'm trying to get it done and then it's not going to happen because your shifted focus and energy, I guarantee that's projecting off to these people. Does that make sense? I don't care what your year has looked at, looked like to this point on. If it has sucked, stop letting it suck and start over today. Does that make sense? Stop figuring out what you should have done. And Tony was talking about this too. Um, we shouldn't do the shoulds. We need to turn our shoulds to our musts. We need to turn, right? We need to, we can't live like that. We have to show up with massive enthusiasm. When you can start to shift your brain into being enthusiastic, present, and you're, again, you're changing your physiology, you're changing your focus, you're changing your language, you're, cha you're, you're going deeper with people. You're not just like, hey, I want, like doing mass amounts of messaging, uh, copy and paste saying, hey, you want to join me? But like, man, like, hey, thank you so much for doing this. Like, where are you struggling right now? Where do you feel like, and I cannot tell you how many conversations I've had today that have been so powerful. They're like, Julianne, I'm in. Like, I'm in. Thank you so much. It's almost like I was doing them a favor that I have a solution for where they're slacking and lacking and feeling like defeat in their life. So if you're coming to them defeated, there's going to be no segue, if that makes sense. And I'm telling you what, the more and more I'm thinking about this and the more that I feel about this and the more I'm pumped up about this, I have found so much joy in creating such a solid culture in my challenge groups that creating connections outside of my challenge groups in text messages and messages and email with my challengers and not just bringing them on to bring them on, but to go so deep with them to where it is so cool. One, a coach on here, she said, Julian, I'm ready to run my own challenge group and I need to tell you something. I am so inspired the way that you've led us in these groups because it's always been about small wins. It's always been about like, let's get our water in today. If that's all you can do today, let's get it done. You've always been the one that says like, man, if we can just get this done, that's enough. And over time, those small wins add up. And she said, I focus so much on those small wins that I started having huge, tremendous wins over time losing weight, right? Because a lot of times they're like, Juliana, well, how long did it take you to lose 35 pounds? I don't know you guys, because I started shifting my focus. I shifted my focus onto what and how I could be for myself each day where, man, I got up without like hitting snooze. That's a big deal for me. Someone just said that in our group today. It was awesome. 
And I was like, that's what this is about. They've never done that before. And that's what you celebrate. Remember that the small wins to you are huge wins to other people. So as you're approaching your month, the end of the month, I know this is the last week, I guarantee you can get whatever you want to done, get done and cultivate. You can do it by just simply shifting your state and shifting your enthusiasm. You have to shift your mindset right now, not to the slack, lack, all this stuff, but to empowerment of like, you know what? I cannot wait to transform a life today. That's exactly how it starts. And I know people talk like that and you may not actually believe it because maybe you're not feeling that, but the more I'm connecting with people that I really enjoy connecting with, the more excited I am to help them. And for all of you, I can't even express to you how deep it is my desire for you to have massive amount of growth. Whether that's me pushing you and you don't like it, I'm doing it in a way that I cannot even tell you that like, if you're ready to do this, you can do insane things in this. And I think a lot of people want to reserve on the push. They want to reserve back on the hustle and the effort that it's going to take to build a business. I think it's a scary thing because you have to push outside that comfort zone, almost reveal yourself in, in maybe possibly failing, if that makes sense. Um, our team was six star qual and we dropped it. It's not a big deal. Some of you are on here and you're like, ah, like frustrated about that. Do you want to know what I said to them the next day? I said this, I said, Hey, is everyone still alive? Are we breathing? Like, is your heart rate still going? Like, do you have breath and air in your lungs? <laughs> and people are like, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. And I'm like, huh, crazy, crazy how that happens, huh? That something like you, you, you miss a goal and you wake up the next day and you're still breathing. We put so much pressure on ourselves and I don't know if I talk about it enough because I don't want you to think and, and think that my walk is just like, it just happens y'all. I just snap my fingers and it just happens. There's times I miss goals. There's times we don't get it when we need to. There are times where, you know, this, this or that, but how I wanted to show up for the team that is in my corner just as much as I'm in their corner, I want to say, we're good. Let's keep going. Like we are, this is just a part of our story, but I see so many coaches get so caught up on such little things that don't matter. And they allow that to literally become weeds inside of their head that I missed success club. I did this. No one wants to do this. And you know, what starts piling up in their heads. Then it goes right to their heart that they're not enough, right? One of the biggest fears that people have, one of the biggest limitations people have is that they are not enough. And so when you start to let those weeds grow in your heart and in your head, you are not going to grow as a coach. But if you can start to shift your momentum, shift your enthusiasm, you're going to start to realize, man, when I can actually put out a bite today, I said, Eric, I don't even know how many likes it gets. You want to know something, guys? I'm not liking my own pictures anymore on, on Facebook, you know, to help the algorithm. Um, I'm doing certain things that I, I'm not necessarily tagging a million locations on my stories anymore because I authentic and I get it. It'll get more people to reach. I'm not telling you to not do that. I'm just saying for me, I was like, you know what? I just want to be me. <laughs> That's all I want to do right now. And I feel like I, I looked at Eric today and I'm like, Eric, I'm really proud of my last post. I really loved it. I felt it. Can you go read it? And that to me mattered because it wasn't about what someone was going to get from it in the sense of like, would they join me? That was not my intention with my post today. My intention was I feel free from the content I just shared because it's no longer capturing my heart. And I hope that helps someone today. When I'm posting on social media, when I'm talking to people, when I'm in the team page, I am not expecting anything in return. Even going 10 star qualification, you can ask the group, like we can even talk about going elite the first year. I remember I talked to them and I said, I was nervous. And I said, Hey, Hey you guys, um, I'm just like throwing this out there. Uh, would you guys like, I don't know, want to be an elite team this year? And they're like, yeah, Julianne, whatever you want. We like, we want to help you. And I was like, I, and I hope some of you that were in that thread can remember this. And I said, really? Like you would do that for me? And they're like, yeah, of course. And it's so crazy when you lead and you show up with your social media and you show up in your messages, not expecting anything in return, but just in the hopes that it can help someone. I cannot even express to you the amount of love, the amount of energy, the amount of um, everything, like happiness and gratitude that will come into your life because you're not just trying to withdraw.
You are trying to deposit because you know that maybe someone just needed that today. And when you start to show up like that in the team page, it to create and cultivate a culture that you want to see. I had a coach quit because she saw something and didn't like it. And I was like, well, what could be a different approach? I know I've shared this. What could be a different approach than you quitting? What if you could show up so hard in the team page to, to lead the way that you want to lead that could seriously change and impact what you saw? Instead, you want to quit, right? That's the easy thing to do. I had a coach say, could you never lead a coach call like that again? I don't like how you were yelling at me. I felt like you were my mother. I said, you know, I can't promise you that I won't lead like that. I can't promise that. The energy I'm bringing, I can't promise you that. However, what could be a different approach for you? What could you do to overserve and overlead in a way that you want that? And she's like, oh, I can start my own team calls. I was like, that's such a good idea. If you, you know what, I, do you guys get what I'm saying? Where instead of expecting people to do things for you, lead the way that you want them to, and then you start to get frustrated on the way they're doing it and you're not doing it, doesn't make any sense. It's coming to it without any solutions. It's coming to it with just expecting things in return, right? But what if you started to shift your mentality and say, man, because you want to know something, the way that I lead is because I didn't have a leader leading me. The way that Team Happy and Fit started was because I wanted a culture that wasn't something that I had. So instead of sitting around and complaining about what I didn't have, I started to overcompensate and say, you know what? I'm going to do what I wish I had because I don't want my team one day to ever feel the way that I did when I first started as a coach. That I want to overdo this to where they have such a culture that is so good because so many coaches wait. They wait for the leader to lead them and then they're frustrated with the leader. They, they wait to hit success club and then they're frustrated they don't hit success club. They're frustrated with their challenge group, but they're not trying to do anything to fix it. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what if you just constantly deposited, didn't expect anything in return, and just showed up with massive enthusiasm? That if you saw something that didn't sit so well with your stomach, that you could do something else instead of getting frustrated, stuck, and angry about it? What if you could shift your mind, shift your heart, shift all those things, and show up really hard in a way that you wish that person had, or you wish you would have? two months ago. So instead of getting down of like, oh, I'm not here yet. I want to be there yet. How about all that's gone and today you show up how you showed up two, two months ago. I guarantee you will start to see such a massive change in the way that you lead and the way that you coach and the way that your business goes. Instead of trying to convince people to join you that you're leading so much by example that it's almost freaking contagious that they can't just say no. I swear that's what's happening to me. And it's not like where I'm not getting prideful about it. I'm almost like, this is so neat. Like people are like, Julianne, um, a girl was telling me, she's like, Julianne, I'm just so frustrated. I don't think that this is how life is meant to live. I'm not fulfilled. I want more time with my family. This and I said, and you know what I said to her? I said, huh, what are you going to do about it? And she's like, you know what? I need to do this, this. And I was like, okay, well, what's your solution? What make your move? What's your move? What's your next step is what I said. So I didn't say anything about coaching. All I said was, huh, Interesting. Tell me more about that. Then make your move. What, what do you have to do to get the fulfillment that you want? And she's like, huh? And then I was like, and then coaching came to be, does that make sense? It wasn't this like force of like, Hey, where it's like, man, like if you're in so much pain, if you are frustrated and, and I need to tell you guys this, when I get an objection, this is how I can show up with massive enthusiasm. I had someone who's going to join our team at some point, but she told me no, because she's breastfeeding. And I couldn't help about think about all of the mamas who are on this call, who show up, whether they're pregnant, show up as soon as they have a baby, show up whether physically or not, who are breastfeeding, who have freaking little kids running around, who have kids on the Zoom. As soon as someone gave me that objection, I thought about the gratitude and the amazement of how amazing our team is where I see someone like Kara, I see someone like Lauren, I see someone like Liz, right? I see someone like Steph. I see, I see Erica. I see these mamas showing up. And that is where my mindset went. Was like, man, 
we have such a cool crew of people that are also teaching me that with that life transition, I could do it too. Because this person has no idea that that's a possibility for them because no one showed them. And I'm so thankful for coaches like Jess, right? Misty, Molly, I see all of you guys constantly with, with your kids and, and how you're getting them involved. Kristen, when you're doing that, and I'm like, man, that is so powerful. And so I shift instead of, oh, another no. I was like, man, I'm so incredibly grateful for the team that I have. It's, it's, a, it's full of people who are willing to show up when life is hard. Does that make sense? So show up with massive enthusiasm and keep depositing. And I swear, when you can live in that gratitude state, when you can live in that enthusiastic state, you are going to start to see the law of attraction happen, that you are going to see people that are going to talk to you in a way that people have never talked to you before. The way that people are getting so vulnerable with me without complaining, people who are getting vulnerable with me without making excuses, it has been the coolest thing to experience over the last few weeks. So yes, I'm at SC4. I could totally be so upset about it, or I can be so grateful for it, and it cannot wait to make more impact for this, the rest of this week. Well, I'm going to shift my focus, shift my energy, which I have, to, man, this is really cool. How can I deposit? How can I do this? And how, and instead of comparing, oh, I should be here doing this, that that's a waste. That's a waste of thought. That's a waste of energy. You guys, that's only going to make you stuck. That's only going to make you frustrated. That's only going to make you feel less than. You are better than no one. And no one is better than you. And the way you show up is so powerful. And it is going to make such a huge difference in the impact that you make. I had this weekend someone already, four, I've been four years into this. When is Julian going back to teaching? When, when is Eric going back to teaching? I don't even know who it was. They, they were talking about me to someone else and then someone else told me about it. I was like, this is just crazy. And of course I made a post about it because anybody who's going to say anything about me, I'm going to make a post about it. Right. But like, it's just so crazy. You guys that people are constantly going to throw their opinions, but like you have to guard your heart and you have to use it as you, as ammunition. That is me and my story because I know it's so good when stuff like that happens and people say things and do that because one, it reminds me of my start. It reminds me of how far I've come. But it also reminds me of the person who's afraid to get started. That this journey is going to throw roadblocks at you. You're going to feel insignificant if you allow yourself to feel insignificant. You might feel comparison if you allow yourself to feel comparison. Instead, when you're comparing, show up with massive enthusiasm and support. When you're feeling less than, how can you help someone feel like so good? I don't want to say more than you, but how can you make someone who's maybe feeling less than feel good about themselves? When you start to shift your perspective, you are going to grow so much as a leader. So this is kind of segueing into what I wanted to share with you is the two keys of exceptional communication. And number one is this, the quality of my life is the quality of my communication. The quality of my life is the quality of my communication. The quality of my life is the quality of my communication. And the number two is this. Nothing in life has any meaning except the meaning you give it. Nothing in life has any meaning except the meaning you give it. So these are the three forms of communication. Number one. Words, so it's words, and then this is what I want to share with it. Words represent 7% of what actually influences human behavior. Words represent 7% of what actually influences human behavior. Number two, voice qualities is number two and this is what goes along with it number two voice quality represents 38 percent of what influences another human being 
In other words, how you use your voice will affect someone more than what you say. This is going to transform the way you communicate with people. Voice qualities represent 38% of what influences another human being. In other words, how you use your voice will affect someone more than what you say. Number three, physiology. I'm getting this also from um, Unleash the Power With It, my work booklet. Does that make sense? This really struck me, and I feel like it's really been powerful for me in my conversation since I saw Tony Robbins. Number three is physiology. Physiology represents 55%. The way you use your body represents the majority of what actually influences people when you communicate. So, for example, when I got on an elevator the other day, I don't know, it, it just happened. I got on, I'm like, hey everyone! And I like did that. I was like, hey everyone! And it was like packed. And they're like, everyone's, it was crazy. Everyone's like, hi! And was super enthusiastic. Today, my good friend Hannah and I went to the grocery store. And as soon as we met the cashier, Again, eye contact, my physiology, the way that I was communicating, my voice was, was like great and, and, and enthusiastic with her. And you could tell she was more friendly with us and gave us like a discount and a card and like this, whatever. Today I dropped a, a tub of, of uh, peanut butter awkwardly and it broke and shattered. And I was like walking by the guy, I was like, hey, by the way, I broke this in the aisle that I went and showed him. He's like, oh, I'll take care of it. But it was interesting how he was just like walking first. I'm starting to notice this as I'm bringing myself into a room. So how could you take this to a conversation over Facebook? I simply think we're recording a video and saying, hey, Sarah, I'm so excited that I could be chatting with you versus like, hey, Sarah, I'm really excited that you could be part of this group. But when you're like, Sarah, like you're like, going through the video, you guys can feel me. I see your smiles. Does that make sense? I guarantee it's going to shift how that person's going to receive talking to you. Even in my Instagram stories, I'm dancing more and like looking at it and like, just be like, yeah, like in there where I'm like, people are feeling me. They feel me. My friend Hannah's laughing at me. You know, it's all good. Um, so physiology represents 55% the way you use your body represents the majority of what actually influences people when you communicate. So I see this a lot with, with, with people trying to communicate and invite and all this stuff. First of all, deposit, deposit. How can I add value? Brittany McMillan was brilliant and she said this, every person who told me no this month, I sent them a recipe I loved. I was like, that's brilliant. Like when they're like, no, 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 like I don't wanna join you. And she's like, you know what? It's so great, but hey, I just need to tell you something. I've been loving this recipe. It's been amazing. Here it is. She's adding value to their lives as they're saying no to her. Who's going to remember her with that? I like, I 100% was like, that's so brilliant. That is so, and, it, and it's not brilliant in a conniving trickery type of way. It's brilliant in the sense of depositing. Hey, you're going to, she said, you're going to tell me, no, I'm going to give you something. That's what she said. I was like, man, that is so cool. She's adding value to people who knows that would ever join her, but that's not her intentionality when she's talking with them. Does that make sense? How cool is that? Key beliefs that we have um, with communication. It's not what happens. It's what you do that makes the difference. It's not what happens. It's what you do that makes the difference. There is no absolute relationship between any two experiences in life. So ask this better question, what's next? It's not what happens, it's what you do that makes the difference. There will be situations, there will be times where you might be tempted to go into old limiting beliefs, scenarios, not feeling enough, getting down on yourself, feeling guilty for not being here or there, doing this and that, right? Instead, how about you shift your focus to, you know what, and set this, here's an example. Eric brings me my shake today. And I go, oh, did you blend it? Then I looked at him and I'm like, thank you for blending it. I'm so glad you blended this. I'm so thankful that you took the time to, one, make my shake, and, and I'm so grateful you blended it. I usually just shake mine. And so instead, I like, I had a moment of like, 
Julianne, shift this because you are being ungrateful right now of, of, of like, just like a wonderful human being, like being so a man of service, right? It's going to change your relationships. This isn't just going to change your business. Does that make sense? And here's another example. It seems like it just happens with Eric. We are, we are hardest on the people that love us the most because we know that they'll love us. I was getting my hair done, sitting in the chair for seven hours. And I was like, Eric, can you bring me food? I just want food. Really, I wanted this place from Hannah's, like this specific food from Hannah's. Um, it's a cafe that's down the street. And he's like, sure, whatever, whatever. And he comes and he hands me this like sandwich. And I'm like, oh, did you make this? This isn't Hannah's. You guys, he made me a sandwich. Like it was the bomb. It was like, like layered, like, but of course I'm like, oh, like, first of all, he made it like a labor of love again. And he drove all the way out of his way to come to deliver the sandwich. And I was like, you know what? I'm so grateful for this sandwich. I like, thank you for taking the time to make this. It's going to change your relationships. I'm catching myself. I'm catching myself. I, I know you guys can relate to this. You, this is not the way you do the dishwasher. This is not the way you load the dishwasher. Instead, thank you so much for loading the dishwasher. If we have to do it a couple of times, you know, whatever we will, it's going to shift the way your relationship is. So imagine if you can start to make this little shift in your conversations with the people you work with. Imagine if you can start to shift the communication that you bring yourself into challenge groups. Are you scheduling posts and running? Are you leaning on other people to do it? What if you went live in your challenge groups or you had weekly Zooms? Like Laura's enthusiasm on our Zoom today was brilliant. It was so good. Kelsey, same thing. Like you added so much value and truth to it, right? Jenny, you were there. Some others, you were there. Where it's like, what, how can you change this and make this shift in the way that you show up and present yourself? Number two, for a key belief, in order for things to change for you, you must change. In order for things to change for you, you must change. That might seem like a, a, a duh. But sincerely, are you repeating behaviors of, oh, I should have done more invites this month or dang it I did this again <laughs> and you're finding yourself in this repetition without and throughout your business you got to think about it how can you change what you're doing it takes a minor tweak it doesn't take millions of hours to do this right it just takes a minor tweak look for people who have the results you want Find out what they are doing and do the same thing. Look for people who have the results you want. Find out what they are doing and do the same thing. Here's an example. Um, I'm not defending my diamond rank. What does that mean? I will never lose my diamond rank. It's so solid. It's so solid. The way that I run my business the way that I prioritize my business, it is so solid. Meaning I've, I've, I've created solidarity with how I do that. And Diamond is four PS coaches and two emeralds on each side. I cannot tell you how many emeralds, and a lot of you are on here, which emerald I feel like is so amazing and such a huge start to your business that is seriously gonna compact over time. A coach sent me a text that her husband's business center made a significant amount of money because he went emerald. A significant amount of money, that's two streams of income. Her business center and his business center. And I was like, wow, that's so amazing. Emerald is a huge deal, right? So I, you should be seeking how do I make sure that I have such a solid business. If you're seeking the type of income and, I'm, and, and that's what you want, but you're not ready to hear it, don't come for advice. Don't come with the intentions of you're not going to actually put in the work. Does that make sense? Not yelling at you. And if I am yelling at you and you take that, you can go leave your own zoos, right? But I'm just being honest about that. Of what you want and what you seek, you need to find people that are doing that. You want to hit Success Club. What I would look 
see who's hitting success club and message them. They might tell you this, they're doing the four vital behaviors. They might tell you this, they're doing canned responses. They might tell you this, they're constantly inviting. Then you can get specific, well, what are you saying? They're probably gonna tell you something that I've told you because they're just doing it, right? In order for things to change for you, you must change. Look for people who have the results you want and find out what they are doing and do the same thing. You're a mom and you see another mom crushing it. What should you do? Instead of get jealous that that mom's at this point and you're not there, instead of shifting your focus to the lack, slack, and insignificance of how you're allowing yourself to feel, how about you make a shift and a change of massive enthusiasm, you deposit, build that person up and say, man, I'm really excited to get there. How are you doing it? We put up these walls and we create the separation based off of insecurity. Insecurity is not going to build your business. Comparison is not going to build your business. I honestly, when people say I'm comparing this or that, I have to unplug and I'm like, that's on you. You are allowing yourself to cultivate and sulk in that type of feeling versus taking massive action and enthusiasm on how to make a difference in your business. Does that make sense? You see someone who's crushing a challenge group and excited getting a bunch of people results, I would ask them how. Does that make sense? You see someone who's rank advancing, I would message them and I would ask them, hey, especially if it's a new coach who's gone Emerald, a new coach that's gotten SC2, something. I think there's something to learn from everyone. In fact, I love learning so much from all of you. I spend a lot of my time on YouTube learning myself. I'm not afraid to learn from people who other people might think are better or less better, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's not my focus. I don't focus like that. My focus isn't on, well, she's here and I'm here. I don't focus like that. My focus is that someone can always teach us something. A seven-year-old taught me how to be grateful and nice and compliment people the other day. You guys didn't see that post. I walk into a store and she's like, hi. I'm like, and her, her physiology and language, she literally stepped into her hello. And guess what I did? I was like, hi. And I did it back. Her words, her physiology, her language. She said, I just love your dress. My smile. I'm like, oh, thank you. She's like, and your hair. It's like, oh, thank you. She's like, and your shoes. And I was like, you are way too kind. More people need to be like you. I learned a lot from a seven-year-old that day. I'm not afraid to, to say that I need to be a learner. Does that make sense? The more you can be in the mentality of growth, the better off you are. And then how you deposit more is you don't keep everything to yourself. I see over and over and over again, coaches so afraid to share the goods because they're in the scarcity mindset. The more you deposit the more enthusiastic and fun you're going to have in this business. It might be the smallest win ever. Man, guys, and I shared this in our challenge group thing where, like, I learned how to crush my water today. I need to tell you how. My seven-year-old got a job. He gets paid 10 cents. I don't know. Whatever idea that you have that works for you, it doesn't have to be business-oriented. Does that make sense? It can be mind shift. It can be a, a good, solid morning routine. The more you deposit, the better it's going to be for you. I'm not saying you deposit only in hopes of getting anything in return, but I'm telling you, the more you can take massive action in depositing and lifting other people up, being in gratitude, sharing everything, the better it is for you. The best coaches that I know and grow from are the ones who share everything and don't hide anything because that they know there is enough success for them and they're not out to seek a selfish business. They honestly believe in empowering other people and they honestly love seeing people be successful. That's why it's easy for me to say, I want our team to go 10 star because it means so much more to me than a rank and a recognition at Summit. To me, I know what it represents. It, re it represents so much. And I know the people in my corner know that. Where it's like, man, if, maybe if I could just raise the bar on a scary goal, some other people would do it too. That would be really cool. To where that's how I lead. That's how I live, and that is who I want to surround myself with, are people who live in the state of gratitude. And when you start to do that, it's going to make a major shift. So real fast, I want you to write this down, and you don't have to answer it yet, is processing fears. So through the communication, through the shift, through the massive enthusiasm, 
and not allowing comparison. And, and, and the more you feel stuck, the more stuck you're going to be. The more you dwell on stuck, the more stuck you're going to be. The more you dwell on frustration, the more frustrated you're going to be. The more you dwell on inadequacy, the more inadequate you're going to feel. Does this make sense? Shift your focus, shift your everything. You're going to shift your life. Make the shift, right? So what is your greatest fear? What is your greatest fear? You can type it in the comments if you want, but you totally don't have to. And I want you to think about this. What is your greatest fear? And yes, bees for sure were my number one fear, but something greater than that. Does that make sense? For me, when we were moving to California, my number one fear is that we'd go bankrupt. But then I started to think about it. I was like, okay, I don't think that's true. But if that were true, that's still not the end of the world. I'd still be breathing, right? In our heads, we think that those things are going to end us. It won't. If I were to ever go bankrupt, you guys, I'd survive, right? So what is your greatest fear? Fear of disappointment. That's so real. Judgment. That's so real. No one at my funeral. Yeah. Forgotten. Not having a legacy, right? What is your number one fear? Abandonment. That's huge. And a lot of times these fears have so much to do with the things that have happened to us. Does that make sense? That is why I think we can cultivate a community of people that man can we start to make transformations with those fears you guys that if we were just to over serve deposit lift up other people a difference in light that would be shed in our lives each and every single day so number one what is your greatest fear not being able to provide for my family that is one i think we can all fear like that is something that i have feared that is something that eric has feared that is such a deep, deep one in family, as I know that. So number two, what benefit has this fear given you in the past? What is a good thing that has happened to you because of this greatest fear? For me, when we moved to California, we grew so much. We got Wyatt. We learned how to live in the most expensive city in the United States and, and be able to thrive, right? We've been able to do so many things because we made this leap. It's crazy when you start to really tackle and look at your fear. So much drive, absolutely. What benefit has this fear given you in the past? Growth, yes. Relationships, or maybe the benefit is letting go of toxic relationships, right? Getting rid of people that, that weren't, weren't helping you, they were suffocating you. I've learned to let others in no matter how short of time. Love hard, yes. Never giving up no matter how hard I fall or fail. Yep. What benefit has this fear given you? The number three is this. Why be free of this fear now? So you have this fear. It's benefited you in some way. Typically our fears are aligned with the, the beliefs of I'm not loved and I'm not enough. Those are the two limiting fears in life. Everything boils down when you really chip away at it. Not providing for my family really goes into, it could be I'm not feeling loved or enough, right? So every fear that we have boils down to those two things. But in some way we've gotten benefits from them. So why be free of this fear now? So if you have this fear of judgment, how could you be free from this now? What could you do um, to be free of this fear, of the judgment? Living your authentic self and being you? I see a lot of you who have very critical family members and still show up. I think of Sarah Freed. I remember when we first started coaching and she couldn't post certain things on social media because of her family. And now she just does it. It's so cool. I just remember how, how scared she was of that. Same thing for me. Why be free of this fear now? And I want you guys to know this. Yeah, she's, she's so freaking amazing. I'm just, I cannot express to you guys how grateful I am for this team. And like, whatever anyone ever says, they're not depositing. They're only withdrawing. I feel that way. Like, I just feel that way now. And it's, it's so clear to me that if you are feeling frustrated, it's easy to blame other people for your frustrations, right? If you're feeling stuck, it's either to blame such situations, but when you start taking ownership and you start living authentically, 
the, the greatest things are about to happen. And I think we've given each other permission to create a culture on Team Happy and Fit that no matter what, we are going to support each other. That whatever crazy ideas you have that other people will tell you not to do it, we'll be the first to tell you just to go do it. And I'm so thankful for that. And do you think that that happened by accident? It didn't. It all came from a place of me craving and Sarah craving things that we weren't getting. So instead of allowing ourselves to feel frustrated by that, we took action on it. When you can take this massive action and stop comparing your businesses to each other and start celebrating each other, you're going to learn from each other. You're going to grow together and you are going to start to see a shift. Instead of the can'ts and won'ts, you're going to be like, man, I have to. Or the, instead of the shoulds, you're going to be like, I want to, I will. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a tremendous impact on people and you're going to go layers deep and you're going to start to see this shift in other people. I just can't help but think how many people need to be on this zoom right now, how many people need to be a part of this team right now. But then maybe that's why we get out of our fear knowing if I could be free from the certain fear that I have, that I could reach someone and they need to hear a message like this because their whole life is about to change. That is the power that you have. It's not the rank. It's not the success club. And yes, you guys, that's going to grow your business. At the end of the day, if you want to grow a business, that's the way you need to do it. But I feel like if you're feeling stuck, you're looking at it all in the wrong way. If you start to shift, shift your focus, shift your mentality, shift your physiology, shift your enthusiasm, shift the way you use your voice, you're going to start attracting people that are going to need this and join you. And it's not going to seem like it's a thing you had to force. It's just naturally people are going to be so attracted to your energy and your light and your positivity and your realness and your rawness and the way that you feel so convicted on helping other people. I can't help express that. And I know you're on this call and I know you're a part of this team and I know you're still a coach. You haven't quit yet because you feel that too, that you know that more people have breathed so much belief into you that you know that there's more for you out there, that there is more fulfillment, that there is more joy, that there is more hope, that there is more something for you, and that you know the easy way would to be quit, to quit. The easy thing to do is to get frustrated and feel guilty and blame. That's the easy thing. But instead, when you start taking that ownership and you show up so hard with so much enthusiasm and so much love because I care about your pain, I care about your anxiety, I care about that you don't sleep, I care that you don't feel like you're a good mom, I care that you're a stressed, overworked, burnt out teacher or a nurse, I care that you're, you're struggling in your relationships, I care that you were abused once, I care that you struggled so much in your childhood, I care that you feel inadequate, right? I care that you feel that way because it's time to make a change. And when you start showing up like that for people, their whole world is about to change. It's not about nutrition and fitness, even though that is so a huge element in what we do. But when you start to shift your mentality and your thinking and your voice and the way you write your stories and your social media, it's going to change your whole world. That literally on social media, instead of, hey, I have five to 10 spots opening, you should join me. <laughs> it goes, ladies. Do you just not feel yourself lately? Hey, moms, like, are you just like hoping you get through another day? Are you wishing days away? There's a different way. I know how to help you, right? Helps people help people, hurt people hurt people. And we are in the business of helping. And we are in the business of changing lives. And we are in the business of making such a huge, powerful impact. And the only way we can do that is if we constantly deposit and expect nothing in return. I promise you, you will not go bankrupt. The more you give and the more you serve and the more you leave, the more you overserve and you do that, your whole world is about to change. And I need to tell you this, and we're going to end on this. Your business is built by you, which is so much freedom. And it's built because you get to be you, which I think is even more freedom, right? No one's telling you how to be, how to do, how to think. Like, that's all you in your own words. But you literally, every single one of you on here can have a business that is built by you, that you get to be you, that is going to create so much freedom for you. That is not just financial freedom. But I want you to hear that part, too, because I feel like a lot of us on here don't feel worthy enough to have a successful business. Whether you can say that or not. I feel like if you truly believe that you are worthy enough for it, 
you would take massive action and enthusiasm and not blaming or excuse making. I really feel like you would take massive action on over serving if you truly believe you are worth it and that you don't have to fit the mold of everyone else, that you can go at the beat of your own drum, that you don't have to look like everybody else and sound like everybody else, that you, you, yes, you are enough and your voice is enough. And maybe the only tweak that you need to really make is how your enthusiasm is with other people. And maybe also another tweak you need to make is instead of receiving, you're giving and you're constantly giving, expecting nothing in return, even to the people who tell you no. I love you all so much. I can't even express it. I, I think about you all the time and how grateful I am. Eric and I said that on our drivers, like we're so grateful.